Thank you for joining me. My name is Amber and I work as a librarian at the Essex branch of the Baltimore County Public Library. And today we are going to be adventurous as we collect natural objects to make wind chime sun catchers. Before we get started and collect our items, I would like to tell you a little bit about Aesop's Fables. Fables are very, very short tales that were created a long, long time ago by a man known as Aesop. Now Aesop was a storyteller that traveled the countryside telling these fables, these tales that were meant to teach a lesson or accentuate a moral. And the characters in these fables were either animals or objects or forces of nature that spoke like we do, like humans, using personification. Personification is when you take an object and make it sound like a person. So the fable that I want to tell you today has to do with two natural forces, strong, powerful natural forces that will make our sun catcher wind chime sway and sparkle. The north wind and the sun. The north wind and the sun had a quarrel about which of them was stronger. While they were disputing with much heat and bluster, a traveler passed along the road wrapped in a cloak. Let us agree, said the sun, that he is the stronger who can strip that traveler of his cloak. Very well, growled the north wind, and at once sent a cold, howling blast against the traveler. With the first gust of wind, the ends of the cloak whipped about the traveler's body, but he immediately wrapped it closely around him, and the harder the wind blew, the tighter he held it to him. The north wind tore angrily at the cloak, but all his efforts were in vain. Then the sun began to shine. At first his beams were gentle, and in the pleasant warmth after the bitter cold of the north wind, the traveler unfastened his cloak and let it hang loosely from his shoulders. The sun's rays grew warmer and warmer. The man took off his cap and mopped his brow. At last he became so heated he, that he pulled off his cloak and to escape the blazing sunshine threw himself down in the welcome shade of a tree by the roadside. Now the lesson that a Aesop had hoped you had learned was that gentleness and kind persuasion like that of the sun win where force and bluster fail like what the wind did. It's very forceful. So we are going to make our own sun catcher wind chime. And what you need to do is you need to go outside, take a walk, go on a hike, take a little ride to a faraway place like a pretty park and collect natural objects. But we don't want big natural objects, little ones like flower petals, seeds, nuts, grasses. And as well, you also need to get a branch or a twig, a sturdy one that is approximately 12 to 18 inches in length. And then after you do that, come and join me on the inside as we craft our own sun catcher wind chime. Let's see what we've collected. All around my yard, I found beautiful flowers in bloom. So I picked some hydrangea, I picked some wildflowers, I grabbed some leaves, I even grabbed off too much. <laughs> I also found a nut that a squirrel had for dinner and it has holes in all through it, which is perfect for stringing. Additionally, I grabbed um, some herbs that I had in my garden like basil and rosemary and oregano and mint, and then just some pretty little uh, petunias. Additionally, I decided to rummage through my family seashell collection and I came across some seashells that are full of holes. Again, a wonderful thing to use for our sun catcher wind chime. So let's get started. These are the supplies that you're going to need to make the sun catcher wind chime. Contact paper, Mod Podge, twine, rope, or yarn, glitter, permanent marker, scissors, the screw top rings for mason jars, watercolors, 
brushes, and water. Before we even start, try to find a place to work that is near a hook or a nail so that you can hang your project on as you work. I have a little nail here with the hook, so that's what I'm going to use. Next, you want to grab that stick or branch that I mentioned earlier and cut a long, long piece of rope. I'd say about two to two and a half feet long. Then you want to wrap the rope around the stick like I had on one side. I'm going to show you the other side. So leaving place for it to hang, I'm going to put my finger on it and wrap and just tie one little knot around it. And you can always adjust this if you need to. So I'm just going to tie one little knot around. And then I'm going to wrap it around just so it looks nice and tight and neat. Oh boy, here we go. And I'm just gonna hold the knot with my finger and wrap. And then at the end, when it feels taunt, I'm going to tie it off with the, the original string. And I will just let it go for now until I make sure that this is exactly what I want. And then I hang it onto my nail or hook that I'm working off of. There we go. It's okay if it's a little crooked. We're going to keep working on it. For the next part of the project, you are going to use your contact paper, the rings for your mason jars, and your permanent marker and scissors. So what we're going to do is you're going to use the shiny part of your contact paper. And like I did, because I have five mason jar rings to work with today, I traced five mason jars rings across my paper. Now you want to make sure when you do this that it is on the shiny side and also that you are tracing them in a line. Additionally, you want to make sure that you trace the outside of the rings, not the inside. After doing that, you take the paper up and be careful it doesn't coil and you put the sticky side up. Now this is when you get to be creative with your natural objects that you've collected on your walk or in your yard. I've done the first four rings already. I just simply stuck my flowers, my leaves, my herbs inside the circles. If they pop out the sides a little bit, it's okay because we're going to trim them down. I saved the last one for us to do together. I'm using some rosebuds, a little geranium, this wind chime sun catcher is going to be sweet smelling because I'm using some oregano and some lavender too. So when that is done, you want to take the empty side of the contact paper and simply fold it over the petals and the leaves and Press it down, make it very secure. Keep pressing, it may take a lot of weight. Until it's super tight. Might have to flip it over. Then you take your scissors and you cut on the inside of the black lines that you made. So for example, I'm cutting the black away so that you don't see the black permanent marker. And you cut the entire circle out as best as you can, and you cut away any little leaves that are strangling outside of the circle. It'll be okay. And it's gonna look great, I promise. Once you've cut out all your circles full of flowers and leaves, you can set them aside. And this is when you are deciding what to do with all those shells and nuts that have the extra holes in them. Now, I decided to use a little bit of watercolor and glitter to decorate some of my seashells. Or you may want to just leave them bare. If you use the watercolor, make sure you dilute the watercolor with a lot of water. And to make the glitter stick, be sure to use some Mod Podge. 
Now let's start constructing our Suncatcher wind chime. We're going to use our mason jar rings and cut twine about two feet in length, one piece of twine for each mason jar ring you have. So I've cut five. And you simply just want to tie around the top of the ring and tie underneath the ring. And again, don't trim yet because we may need to readjust. And you do that for each one of your rings. Next, you decide if you want to put your seashells or your nuts on the twine. You may want to set the seashell above or you may want to set it midway and you would just simply put it through the hole, tie a little knot around it, and on its way. So I'm going to do that for all five of my mason jar twist tops. After you've placed all your seashells and nuts and any other additions you would like to put on your twine, you can start attaching it to the branch that you have to support them. I just did the same as I did before, as I, I wrapped and knotted each twine. And I did them at various lengths, but I also made sure that my heaviest string was in the center. And then I'm counterbalancing them with the other mason rings of equal distance. So I'm going to make this one the same length as this one with the walnut. And like I said, I sort of did what I did before, is I tied it so I can get the right height. And then I put a knot, and then I wrapped it again around, just whoops, like I did at the beginning. And if it's not exactly, it's okay. But, and then I tie it off. Okay. I knot, I wrap, and then I knot once more and then cut off the excess. And now it's time to put in our little circles of flowers and leaves. All you have to do is pop it in and it will fit perfectly. And if yours doesn't fit perfectly, you can just put a little dab of glue in the ring. Now I just need to find the perfect place to hang my wind chime sun catcher. May the gentle sun and blustery winds enjoy your creation. Thank you for joining me. Please visit bcpl.info for more virtual events and programs. Mm -hmm.